Wednesday worship. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be an awesome time and we can't wait to see you there. On October 15th, we have a very exciting event that I'm sure a lot of you have heard about, our POL Merry Market. We have a huge selection of awesome local vendors for you and the members of our community to shop from. We are also gonna be having some concessions. It's going to be a great time. Make sure you invite a friend, invite your family. We can't wait to gather with our church family and our community at this event. At the end of the month, October 24th through 28th, we are having a prayer and fast week. Make sure you stay tuned for the details on what we are going to be praying for specifically and how we are going to fast. We cannot wait to unite with each other in prayer and fasting, and we can't wait to see what God is going to do throughout that week. As always, we love to know who is worshiping with us and we do that through our check-in cards. You can scan the QR code that's going to show up on your screen to check in or if you would prefer a digital copy, please raise your hand and one of our hostesses will make sure to bring you one shortly. I am so excited to be in the house of God on a Sunday morning. Get ready for a powerful service. Let's worship. God of thunder, fill our hearts with wonder. Let your power fill this place. We're inviting your voice.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship this morning through our giving. Uh, as you see on the screen, there are many ways you can give here in person, online. There's ways you can connect. But before we uh, do take our tithes and our offering this morning, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. We've got ministers from all over the world traveling for general conference uh, coming up. Uh, some are gone a little early. Uh, it's in Florida, and so there's lots of issues there. So we'll be praying for those that are traveling. Uh, and then the conference, that the Lord will just uh, have his way there, give wisdom and guidance as our leaders gather and, and plan and prepare. Uh, so just keep them in, in your prayers. Also, of course, for Florida, we know what it is to go through uh, recovery after hurricanes. And I'm so thankful it didn't hit us. Uh, the four I've gone through in the last two years down where I work, I'm sorry for Florida, but I'm praising God for us. So uh, <laughs> thankful for that. If you have a need this morning, if you're just signified by the raising of your hand, and we will go to the Lord this morning. Dear Lord, you see. And you know, you are an all-knowing God. And even before we have come into this place, Lord, you know our needs. And you're more than able, God. Lord, but by our faith and profession of who you are, we have lifted up our hands. God, that you would meet every need, Lord, this, here today. Lord, whether it be financial, Lord, emotional, physical. God, our lost families, Lord, whatever it is, you said in your word, Lord, that when we call upon your name, that you hear and that you answer. So, Lord, I pray the day your anointing be upon this service, Lord. Be upon this offering that we're about to give. And each person that's here, your perfect will be done, Lord. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the honor today, Lord, for you are mighty to the tearing down of strongholds, Lord. God, where we are free, Lord, we have met you, and we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As they take up the offering, I'd like to welcome all of you who are guests, either joining us online or here in person today. It is so good to have you. Do y'all know a good church for these folks to belong to? All right, yes, it is good. And I forgot to do the cheer up. I'm sorry. So what do we say? God loves a cheerful giver. I'm out of practice. They, they, you know, I've been back there teaching the kids so long, I forget what I'm supposed to do when I get around adults. Uh, today we're going to continue in worship and then... We have our own in-house evangelist. He's home this weekend uh, bringing the word to us today. Our very own brother, Derek Stewart. Excited to hear from him. We love him and his wife. So thankful that they are part of this church. And thankful that God's sending them out and using them. But then when God allows him to be back home and minister to us, it's a blessing. So we're excited to hear Brother Stewart here just in a few minutes. But let's continue to worship him in song this morning. May the Lord richly bless you.
cast my cares on you, Jesus. Yeah. Come on, clap your hands unto God this morning. He is worthy of your praise. Hallelujah. We join with the angels and the elders in worshiping him. He is worthy of our praises. I know I oftentimes say that on Sunday mornings. I'm not saying it just to say it. God is really worthy of our praises. Glory to you, Jesus.
If you have a need in this building, why don't you just lift your hands right now? If there's something in your life that you need, in your family, in your marriage, in, in your mind, on the job, in the finances, in your health, whatever it is that you need, lift your hands right now. And why don't you begin to lift your voice over that need? Why don't you begin to magnify the Lord above that need? God is moving in this place right now. A miracle can happen in that situation right now. It all can change right now. It all can change today. It doesn't have to stay the same, but God can change it today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Oh, you're worthy, oh God. We love you. We love you. We love you. We worship you, oh Jesus. Hallelujah. God is changing it right now. Things are shifting right now. Things are moving right now. Oh, we love you, Jesus. God is shifting some things. Why don't you clap your hands? You can already feel it. You can already sense it. You can already hear it. You can already see it. God's already in this place. A miracle is already in this place because God's in this place. And whatever you need tonight, today, I believe that God just shifted some things in the spirit. And when he shifts things in the spirit, things in the physical also shift when God's in the place. give honor to our worship team that did such an excellent job leading us into the presence of God this morning. Also give honor to Brother Johnson. Thank you for leading us this morning, Brother Johnson. I know our pastor's out today, but I give our pastor and our first lady. Can we give them a round of applause? Pastor, if you're watching, we love you. We love you and our first lady. We give you great honor, and we are behind you guys 100%, and we want you to know that we love you, we support you. God has blessed us with a great shepherd, a great leader, and he's also an anointed preacher. And I love being able to hear my pastor preach until my soul is something that I need. So we give them honor this morning, praying for their safety. And also we give honor to, to Pastor Charles and to Sister Jamie as well. We love you guys, too, if y'all are watching. Pastor Charles is someone I can consider a friend and a brother. I can consider him my discipleship pastor. I'm glad to have him on the team. God has placed an anointing over him and his wife's life, and I give them great, great honor this morning as well. I give my wife honor today as well. She's my companion. And she's also my counselor. Sometimes I'll, I'll talk to her and she don't have to say anything. She just listens and by the time I finish talking, I have my answer. And other times she tell me, hey, this is what you need to do. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. One time, I think one time she said something so wise and I was like, okay, Sister Weber, now you got some wisdom. 
I appreciate my wife. I value her so much. Um, her friendship, just physically, but also spiritually, I value her so much. And last but not least, I just have to be honest. I love my church. I love my church. I am, I'm so grateful to be connected to our church. We went and played softball um, a few weeks ago at the Family Fun Day, and man, I was sore the next day. I, I felt broken. And pastor told me, he said, hey, he said, when you make 30, it's all going to change. I'm only three months into 30, and I'm feeling it already. So I'm going to need y'all to pray for me, ask the Lord to keep me covered. I need my, the strength of my youth. And somebody, an elder, just said, you're still in your youth. I heard that. I give honor to my church this morning. We love you guys. Um, we're going to get into the word of God. If you're ready for the word, why don't you clap your hands? Awesome. We're going to the book of Psalms, chapter 127. The book of Psalms, chapter 127, verses 1 through 2. Psalms 127. Verses 1 through 2. And it reads as follows. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. Anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest to his loved ones. And before I go any further, I just felt in my spirit that God wants to give rest to somebody. That God wants to give rest to somebody. He said, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Matthew 6 and 10. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. This morning, I want to preach to you from the topic of heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. Why don't you lay your Bibles down and lift up your hands. Father God, we pray in this place that you would have your way this morning, that you would let your will be done, Lord God. I pray for every every toil, every work, every belief, every faith that we have, Lord God, that you would give us rest, Lord God, and peace, and learn, Lord God, who you are to us, Lord God. Learn that in a new way. Lord God, have your way in this place, Lord God. Let us understand ease in you and that sweet stillness that only you can give us. Have your way in this building. Send out every anxiety, Send out every fear. Send out every, Lord God, bit of nerve, Lord God, and place into this place your peace, your joy, Lord God, and your strength. Have your way and let your will be done in this building this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We are so busy. We are a busy people. We are a busy community. We are a busy church. We are a busy city. We are a busy world. We are a busy people. Nowadays, when someone says, hey, man, how are you doing? We respond, man, I'm busy. How you doing, bro? I'm good, man. I'm just busy. And we have learned to identify with our busyness because we are a busy people. We have full schedules and a lot to do. We are a busy people. And our world has created a culture against sleep. Our world has created a culture against rest. Our world has created a culture against stillness. 
our world has created a culture against sleep. And we hear things such as, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Or sleep is for the weak. And I said this when I was in college, but we're going to pull an all-nighter tonight. And we stayed up all night and we studied and got little to no sleep. Because our world has created a culture against sleep. Our world has created a culture against rest. And we pray and we try to find ways we can pray longer and how we can spend hours and hours in prayer, which is good. And we try to find ways that we can fast longer than we fasted the last time, which is good. And we try to find ways that we can manage our household and provide opportunities for our kids, which is good. And we try to work to save money for tomorrow, which is good. And we work overtime and we work two and three jobs because we need to pay off debt, which is good. But my fear is that as we fight for heaven tomorrow, we often miss the presence of God today. See, as we fight for have a better life tomorrow, we often miss God's word to us today. But I've come to tell somebody that I'm not waiting till I die to rest. I'm not waiting until the rapture comes to rest. I'm not waiting for heaven for tomorrow. But I want God's presence today. I want his word today. I want to receive God's peace right now. Jesus Christ did not come to this earth only for me to work and strive and fight and fuss, but he came to give me rest. He came to give me peace. He came so I don't have to deal with the same turmoil I always dealt with. I'm preaching about heaven on earth today. We don't have to wait till tomorrow to have heaven, but I can, you can, we can have heaven on earth today. Heaven on earth. We can have heaven on earth today. See, sometimes the problem is that we think that we have to struggle to know God. We think that we have to struggle to know God. If I'm not struggling, something's wrong, and sometimes we get into a place where we think it's too good to be true. My bills are paid. I, my job is great. My marriage is going good. I need to keep my eye open for the next bad thing to happen. And instead of heaven on earth, we begin to create hell on earth. See, it was Jacob in the middle of the night. Jacob was wrestling with the angel. He said that he saw God face to face. He's wrestling with this angel in the middle of the night. And as they're wrestling in, in the middle of the night, they're, they're, they're toiling and they're fighting. And the angel wants Jacob to let him go, to stop fighting with him. See, Jacob had the things of the Spirit right in his hands. He had heaven on earth. An angel from heaven was on earth, and he's wrestling. He's fighting. He's fighting with heaven on earth. He's fighting with the angel. He's fighting with the things of God. He said he saw God face to face. I would say he's fighting with God. He was fighting with God because he wanted a blessing. When the angel told him to let him go, the Bible tells us in that story that he wanted a blessing from that angel. He was already blessed, but he was fighting for a blessing. He was already blessed, but he was fighting for the blessing that he already had. Who am I talking to? Who has been fighting? Who has been warring? You've been fighting for what God has given you. You're fighting for peace, and he's given you peace already. See, Jacob... Jacob was fighting for that blessing that he, are, he already saw God face to face. He already had a connection with the things of the spirit, and he's fighting for something that's already in his hands. I'm fighting for peace. God already gave me peace. I'm fighting for joy. He already gave me joy. I'm fighting for strength. He already strengthened my body. Why am I fighting for what he's already placed in my hands? Jacob was wrestling that angel in the middle of the night. It was dark. It was the nighttime. He's wrestling that angel, and the angel said, let me go for the day breaks. He was saying, let me go because it's nighttime, but the sun's about to come up. 
What he was saying was, let me go because your season is about to change. Let me go because it was the old season, but now it's about the new season. And Jacob said, no, I won't let you go. And what Jacob was saying was, I'm going to wrestle with the old season, even though God just told me a new season is coming. God's already given you the word. He's already given you the prophecy. He's already given you the answer. But we fight him. We fight him for the fulfillment of that. He's given you a prophetic word. He's given us direction and clarity, and we wrestle with God. Lord, when are you going to do it? When are you going to fulfill it? And we fight for what he's already given us. And that night, Jacob created hell on earth when he could have rested and had heaven on earth. Prayer is essential. Fasting is essential. Working is essential. Working hard is essential. Ambition is good, but sometimes we gain selfish ambition and we work, we work beyond God and we work past God and we miss God in the present moment. We miss what he has for us today. Jacob was wrestling this angel, and he said, hey, I want you to tell me your name. What's your name? And the angel did not tell Jacob his name. He didn't tell him his name. Jacob said, what's your name? And he did not tell him his name. Because that struggle did not guarantee that he knew God better. That struggle did not guarantee that he knew that angel better. That struggle did not guarantee that he knew the things of the spirit better. Because God will put us in a struggle to learn him, but we don't have to be in a struggle to know him. God will put us in a struggle to learn him, but we don't have to be in a struggle to know him. I'm telling somebody today that you have known God from depression and you have known God from stress and you have known God from giving in to sin. But God is saying this, you can know me from peace. You can know me from ease. You can know me from victory. You've known me from hell, but you can know me from heaven today. Heaven on earth. God doesn't want you to always struggle. He doesn't want you to always be beaten. God wants you to have the victory now. And we struggle so much sometimes by our choice and sometimes by not our choice. And that begins to teach us that we must struggle to know God. Man, when I dealt with finances, I grew closer to God. When I went through that breakup, I grew closer to God. When my ministry wasn't going right, I grew closer to God. And we learn God from struggle, which is good. But I don't have to struggle to know God. I can know God from the other side of that. And heaven is going to be perfect, yes. But I can receive his rest today. I've come to share with somebody today that you don't have to struggle with what you've been struggling with in your mind. And you don't have to struggle with what you've been struggling with in your heart. And you don't have to struggle with what you've been struggling with internally. God can shift and change all of that now. We don't have control of what's on the outside of us. But God can give us rest on the inside. And if he gives us rest on the inside, it will change how we operate in what's on the outside of us. I'm talking about rest on the inside. Rest in my mind. Rest in my heart. Rest in my spirit today. And if we can rest internally, then we'll be able to rest externally. And we can receive the presence of God. Somebody's been praying and looking for an answer from God. You've been fighting and warring for an answer. You've been fasting and praying and you've been trying to pry the answer out of God. But 
God spoke to Elijah through the still small voice. And God's about to teach you a new way to hear his voice. He's about to show you a new way to receive his word. You're going to go into a prayer meeting and you're going to walk out and you're going to say, I know that was God. He spoke to me. I rested in God and I heard his voice. See, rest has nothing to do with laziness. It doesn't have so much to do with just ease. Rest is relationship with God. And God's about to complete our relationship with him and show us how to fight in the spirit, but how to rest in the spirit, how to speak in prayer, and how to listen in prayer. God's about to talk to us in a new way, in a new way. All over this building, why don't we just close our eyes right now? And wherever you are, why don't you lift your hands right now? Why don't you just let God talk to you? Just let him speak to you. We are used to loud. We are used to power. It's essential. We are used to work. But we have to learn to get comfortable in the quietness, comfortable in the stillness, comfortable in the peace. That's when God begins to talk to us, and that's when he begins to speak to us. That's when he gives us closure and healing. And wholeness is in those moments that we learn to let him not just be God, but be a father. He's not a slave master, but he is my father. The disciples were on the boat with Jesus, and the storm is raging. The storm is going on. I imagine the wind blowing and the water's raging, and they say, Master, you don't care that we're going to perish? You're sleeping on the boat in the middle of the storm, and you don't care that we are going to die. See, they knew Jesus from the side of work. They knew him from the side of miracles. They knew him from the side of signs and wonders, but they did not know him from the side of rest. They did not know him from the side of sleep. Well, how do you know they didn't know him? Because they question his character. Jesus, you don't care that we're going to die? How dare they question Jesus? You don't care that we're going to perish. There's a storm going on and you are sleeping. You should be working. You should be working to make those waves stop. You should be working to make that wind stop. You should be working to calm this storm. Shouldn't you? Bible says Jesus rebuked them and said that they didn't have much faith. See, they were trying to fight the anxiety on the outside with anxiety from the inside. They were trying to fight the busyness of life with busyness of the heart. They were trying to fight the storm on the outside with a storm on the inside. But you can't fight anxiety with anxiety. You can't fight busyness with busyness. Jesus said they had little faith. Ye have little faith. Bible says he rebuked the wind and the waves. He, peace be still and the storm stopped. And in that moment, they learned Jesus from another side. In that moment, they learned Jesus from peace, from sleep, from rest. Listen, the storm was going on. And in the midst of that storm, they went to Jesus in prayer. That's what they did. They communicated with Jesus in the middle of the storm. They went to Jesus, yet he said they have little faith. How do I have little faith when I came to you in prayer? How is my faith small when I came to you when there was a storm? Lord, you're telling me I have little faith, but I actually think I had faith enough to come to you in the storm. 
And that's because sometimes we cover up our anxiety with the title of a prayer meeting. And sometimes we cover up our fear with the title of I'm praying about it. Because they were anxious and they went to Jesus in prayer, but they really prayed out of anxiety. And they prayed out of fear. They were praying, but they really didn't trust. They were praying, but they really didn't get any peace from that. They were praying, but they really, they really didn't trust that he was going to do it. That's why their prayer did not say, Lord, I know you can do it. They say their prayer say, you don't care that we're going to perish because they prayed, but they were anxious. And sometimes we work because we're anxious. And sometimes we work because we are afraid. And we work because, man, if I don't work this overtime job, I won't be able to pay these bills. If I do this or do that, I, this won't happen or that won't happen. I'm going to lose that because we don't trust that if we can take a moment away from that and rest in God, that he's going to do that for us. But the fact of the matter is that as, as long as I'm working, he's going to continue working. But it's when I begin to rest, I give him the opportunity to work. You know, the disciples asked Jesus, they said, Hey, Lord, we could not get the demon out of this person. We could not deliver them from that spirit. Why could we not deliver them from that spirit of bondage? Jesus said this, uh, this kind comes out only by prayer and fasting. What he was saying was that you have to war for it. There's going to be some spiritual warfare and you need to fight for it. But some other people said, Jesus your disciples don't fast. Why don't they fast? Jesus said, I'm here. They don't need to fast. They have my presence. They don't need to fast. And what Jesus was saying was that if they have relationship right now, power is going to come later. If they have relationship right now, warfare is going to come later. And we have to learn to be able to get into a place where the relationship with Jesus Christ is above the work that I can do for Jesus Christ. Our relationship with him is above how good of a life I can provide for my kids. Our relationship with him is above how much I can fast to say I fasted this amount of days. Our relationship with him is above our schedules, our work. It's our relationship with God. He said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I know you not. Depart from me, ye resters of iniquity. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I don't know you, but Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We worked for you. We worked for you. We know you. But I don't know you. But Abraham, he said, Abraham, I want you to sacrifice your son. Yes, sir. I'm going to sacrifice my son because you told me to. Okay, Abraham, don't sacrifice your son. Yes, sir. I will not sacrifice my son because you told me not to do it. The Bible says Abraham was called the friend of God. God said he knew Abraham. Wait, Abraham didn't even work for him. He didn't even complete the sacrifice. He didn't work for God. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I don't know you not to the people that worked for him. But then he said, I know you. That's my friend to the person that arrested in him. Because maybe it's that we know God by what we do for God. We know God by what we do for God. God called me to that ministry. I know his voice. God called me to provide for my family. I know that. We work for him. But what we do for him. We know God. But what we do for God. But God knows us. By how we rest in him. He knows us by how we trust in him. He knows us by how we find peace in him. He knows us when we say, Lord, I can't fight this battle. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to let you take care of it because I know you. Yeah. 
And see, God wants us to be able to get to a place where we are so intimate with God and we know God so well that we can be at peace and we can trust him. And I could have said, hey, it's Sunday morning. We are going to, we're going to preach power and authority. That's all great. I don't want power and authority. I want intimacy. I don't want power and authority. I want intimacy. Because if I have intimacy, I'll have power and authority. That's fleeting. I want to know him, and I want to know him well. Let us close our eyes one more time and lift our hands. God is he's talking to somebody, and he's talking to you about your schedule, and he's talking to you about your job and about your family, and he, he's talking to you about the way you've been consecrating, and, and God is talking to us about what we have going on in life because he doesn't want us to pursue things so much that we lose him. Somebody, why don't you just lift your voice and begin to pray to God and, and let him just begin to talk to us in this building. Let him sweep in this place. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We want to know you, oh God. We want to learn to rest in you and be confident in you enough to have peace, oh God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We love you. Want well, somebody entertain his presence, entertain his, his word, entertain his spirit. This is what we're here for. I don't come to church just to get a word and leave. I come to have an experience. I come to touch him. I come to feel him. I come to know him. I come to hear him. I want to hear his voice. Talk to me, oh God. Haramandara. Ramando Rosatara. Ramande re ramando robo satoro. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. They say that, you know, our arguments, arguments are one of the most ineffective forms of communication. Because when people argue, they're loud, they're fussing, they're fighting. They're not really listening to the other person's point. They're just trying to get their point across. And they walk away from that conversation enraged, angry, anxious, frustrated, mad, and still feeling how they felt before their argument. Because arguments are ineffective. Arguments are ineffective. There's something called sleep paralysis. Has anybody ever heard of sleep paralysis? Sleep paralysis is said that when a person is in the middle of falling asleep, and waking up, that's sleep paralysis. They're in the middle of falling asleep and in the middle of waking up. And in that moment, they become cognitive and they can see and hear, but they can't move their body. They can see, they can hear, they can't move their body. They're aware, but they can't move. And in that moment, some people have said that they have seen demons and heard evil things and some people say it's physical. Some people say it's spiritual. 
And I've been in those kind of moments, had dreams like that, where in the dream I couldn't speak and things like that. Moments like that where I'm trying to shake and, and get out of it and I can't. I couldn't reach over to my wife. I, I couldn't speak certain words. And I've been in those moments. And in those moments, what changed it was when I said, Jesus. See, Jesus was the embodiment of heaven on earth, literally. And when I brought heaven down to earth, what I was fighting for, it all changed. But this is what I'm saying. I was in the bed. I was laying on my back. I was in a position of rest. But just because I was in the position of rest, I was still able to call on the name of Jesus. And just because I was in the position of rest did not mean I could not fight. And I hear God saying, you are about to start to fight from a different position. You are about to learn to fight from the position of rest. You're not going to argue with the enemy anymore. You're not going to fuss. You're not going to fight. You're going to command some stuff in the spirit, and it's going to happen. God's about to change some things. You're going to learn to fight from rest, to fight from stillness. See, a king... A king does not have to argue with the people that serve under him. He gives a command one time, and they do it from authority. He doesn't have to stand up and fight with them. He sits on the throne, and he says a command because he has authority. And God said, you've had power, and now you're going to have authority. You've had the power, now you're going to have authority. You had the ability, but now you're going to have authority. Somebody, some things are going to change in your life because you're going to fight and operate from the dimension and the position of rest, of peace, of ease. One final time, let us close our eyes. The presence that God is placing here is a presence that he's talking to us internally and speaking to our minds and spirits and hearts. And it would be a shame for us to leave without acknowledging what he's telling us. All over this place, just listen. Ears wide open in the spirit. And listen to what he's saying. Listen to what he's speaking. Listen to his voice. Because with rest comes the word. And with peace comes clarity. And with stillness comes revelation. Bible says that God created the earth, and we know that process. Six days he created the earth. On the seventh day, Bible says he completed his work and he rested. Six out of seven. He worked six days. On the seventh day, the Bible says he completed his work and he rested. If I'm only working, if I'm only stressing, if I'm only toiling and fighting, I only know six out of seven of God. And that's not enough for me. That's not enough for heaven. That's not enough for salvation. That's not enough for my relationship with God. I don't want six out of seven. I want 100% of God. I don't want just enough. I don't want enough to get by. I don't want just enough to get me through the door. I don't want just enough to get me in. I want enough to really make it. I don't want him to tell me, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you're not. How devastating would that be for me to live my entire life for God? 
and get to that moment and I don't make it in because I couldn't be still enough to hear him and I couldn't be still enough to let him know me and I couldn't be still enough to let him speak to me. How devastating would that be for me to live my life for God and not make it in because I was too busy because my schedule was too full, because I didn't know his voice, because I didn't let him speak to me. How troubling would that be? But I want to really make it in, and I want to have a relationship with God like I've never had it before. I want to know him. Some of my most powerful prayer meetings It's not walking up and down a hall speaking in tongues. There are those two and they're powerful. Some of my most powerful prayer meetings is when I go to the park. And I just sit on the bench and I just listen to God and let him talk to me. And I walk away with peace. I walk away with clarity. And I walk away with answers because I let him talk to me. And he says, that's who I know. That's who I know. Why don't we all stand? What God wants to do we're all busy. We all have full schedules. We all or working jobs, or doing work around the home. We all have families to manage. We all have finances to manage. We're, we all want to get closer to God. We, we truly want to be near God. We, we're busy people. We have full schedules. We have a lot going on. And it takes hard work to make it in this world. It takes hard work to make it in the church It takes hard work to make it on the job. It takes hard work to manage a family, a spouse, and kids. It takes hard work to pay bills. It takes hard work to pay off debt. It takes hard work to make ends meet. It takes hard work to live. And what God is saying is he wants us to be able to do all of that from the place of rest. And God's about to impart him to us. He's going to change our perspective of him and of our relationship with him. And we're going to see God in a new way after today. We're going to feel God in a new way after today. We're going to know God in a new way after this moment. And we're going to operate from a different place. No more stress. No more fear. I'm not saying those things won't try to come. But before they came and we submitted to them, now when they come, we're going to have authority over them. Why don't we close our eyes? I'm going to ask a couple questions. And if the answer is yes, all you have to do is raise your hand. With all eyes closed, thank you for closing your eyes. I'll ask a couple questions. If the answer is yes, all you need to do is raise your hand. Question number one. If you say, I am, I'm busy. I have a full schedule. I have finances to manage. There's a lot going on in life. But I want God to help me manage that. Why don't you lift your hands? And you can put your hands down. Eyes still closed. Question number two. I've been fighting. I've been fussing and fighting with the enemy. I've been fighting for something. I've been fasting and consecrating. I've been believing God. I've been walking in faith and I know God is going to fulfill what I asked him. If that's you, can you lift your hands? And you can put your hands down. Question number three. I want to really walk in the authority that God's given me. I really want to operate in that. 
I've heard people say that they said a prayer and things change, and I, I want to experience that for me. I want to walk in a place where I have so much peace and so much security in the spirit that when I say some things in the spirit, God honors my prayer and things change. I want to have peace and joy and strength, and I want to be able to enjoy the life given God, the life God has given me. If that's you, please lift your hand, and you can put your hands down, and you can open your eyes. And my question is this, my ask is this. If you raised your hand for any of those questions, can we please come to the front? If you raised your hand for any of those questions, even if you didn't, can we please come to the front? come a little closer just for the people in the aisles. Thank you. You know, sometimes sometimes we come to God and, and we come to prayer and we walk away knowing I still gonna, I'm still going to have to work some more. I'm still going to have to continue praying about this. I'm still going to have to do something more so I can really receive this. That's not today. That's not this moment. That's not now. God changed my perspective of him in one prayer meeting. You know, my, when, I, when I grew up, my, my dad was pretty strict. He taught us a lot of discipline. And now I refer back to him for those things. When people are talking to me, I refer to him because he instilled that in me. He taught me that. But with the discipline and the way it was, I believe that it changed my perspective of God because there was no room for failure and there was no room for mistakes. He said, the world is going to basically chew you up and spit you out. The world's cold, and he wanted us to learn. There was no room for error. And as a young adult, in my relationship with God, I would see it like that. It needs to be perfect. And if it wasn't perfect, it was wrong. It needs to be right. And I couldn't decipher between doing my best and trusting God. I, if it wasn't perfect, I didn't do my best. And I remember being at home and listening to a message preached online. And I went into my room by myself and had a prayer meeting with God. And I said, I don't want this pressure anymore. I don't want this anymore. I don't want the depression anymore. I don't want the stress anymore. And I tell you, in that moment, in that one prayer meeting, God changed my perspective of him. I know he's a father. He's not a slave master. He's the God of power. He is. But he's also the God of peace. And it's not his will. It's not his will for you to walk around stressed on your job, in your family, in your home, in your finances. It's not his will. It's not his will. It is not his will. And in that one prayer meeting, he changed my perspective of him and that perspective change has made all the difference in my relationship with God 
It's made all the difference. I'm talking to somebody that has been putting pressure on yourself about your prayer life. Somebody that says, I'm going to read two chapters in the Bible and students and it didn't happen. I was supposed to work this amount of hours and I couldn't make it. I was supposed to do this or do that and God, I failed you. You didn't fail God because you were never holding him up. You didn't fail God. We must work. We must be disciplined. We must be obedient. We have to do it all. We got to follow through what God commands us to do, but we have to learn to do it from rest and peace. Just want to do two things. The first thing, the Bible says we all have fallen and come short of the glory of God. I want us, we're all going to repent. We're all going to repent for our busyness and where we have given into the stress and where we have allowed life to take over us. Let us lift our hands in this building and why don't you just repent with me? We're going to repent together, Lord. I apologize. I'm sorry. Please. Please forgive me, oh God, for my busyness and my lack of awareness of you and for not trusting you, oh God. Forgive me. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for not learning to walk with you. Forgive me for not learning to be at peace. Forgive me for not learning to trust you. Forgive me, oh God, that I haven't learned to settle into you and that I haven't learned to be at peace. Forgive me, oh God. I'm sorry for not submitting to your peace or to your will. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Haramando robo si arabo si. Ya ramanda ramanda ramandere remanda ramando ro ramando ro si atara ramanda ramandere mando ro bosa Before we go any further I want you to know what God's going to do in this prayer meeting The anointing is in here to change your perspective. God's going to change the perspective of our minds. He's going to change and remove the pressure and stress we feel on our hearts. It's going to happen today. It's going to happen right now. It's going to happen in this moment. You're going to walk out of church and you're going to feel God's going to do it in this moment he's going to impart it and he's going to change it right now let's lift our hands and as you pray God's going to heal as you pray God's going to restore and as you pray God's going to change your mind and your thoughts. He's going to release pressure. And you're going to feel the ease and the peace of God. Somebody lift your voice right now. Lift your voice into God right now. Haramando rosatara. Rimando robo si. Rimando ramando ro. Ramando robo si. Yara.